setting the record straight. Okay. Okay, setting the record straight. When you start talking about a situation of, uh, was it swallowing into the vine? Now, if you have Trying one fourth of each part, I'm quite sure they don't have one fourth. It's for the, but they still got it under law, whereas they can get the things and grant the things that they want. Right, but well, that's only because that's only because uh, prior to the, prior to the civil rights movement and affirmative action, etc., you didn't have any rights at all. Right. What happened is in the 17th century, right here in Georgia, where we dwell, the national Native Americans, the Europeans came in and made a deal with us for equipment, heavy equipment, because we couldn't sell our goods because heavy equipment was starting to become a more sophisticated farming. So they made a deal with us and told us that they would give us a certain amount of heavy equipment, like they usually do, and we pay them back in six months. You, you follow? Okay. However, and you can read this, you can read up on this. However, after we did it, they didn't do, they didn't hold true to that treaty because it was a writ, it was oral, not a written agreement. They came back within three weeks. And then when we couldn't afford to pay them, what they did is they took the women and the girl children from us. All right? It didn't stop there, because that's not how the masses dealt, right? And they started having children by them, all right? What happened within a year's time, the Yamasi were trying to hold true to their word, and when they found out that this Caucasian, these British Caucasians, were having sex with their daughters, there was a, what they call a Yamasi massacre here in Georgia, right, like the Zulu did, and they rose up and they started massacring Europeans and push them off the land. But what they had to take back into consideration is that a lot of their women had been raped by these Caucasians and the children being born to them were mulattoes. You follow that? These mulattoes grew up, wanted to leave our campsites or what they call presently reservations. They want to leave the land and go and look and seek out lighter people. So when these mulatto children sought out Caucasians to marry, they produced these Caucasian-looking people who by right can say they're uh, your master. You follow? You understand what happened? And then what happened is the tribes got a war broke out. We blended in with the Seminole, the Creek, the Oshito, the Wichita, and different tribes as your masses. We ended up inside because then all the Europeans came together against us because we whipped a couple of ass. So they got all the different tribes together, uh, all the different cults of uh, the Irish, the Polish, the French, everybody got together and came down us right here in Georgia, right here in Milledgeville. Your father and mashed us. So the men had to, we had migrated in different directions. Those that went to Georgia, we became known as the Seminole. The far ones, ones who are going, so there, others of us went as far as Chile became, as, uh, the, uh, as far as the Yucatan. We scattered in different directions and we became mixed in with the Cherokee. So you find a lot of your masses saying, I'm a Cherokee. And you say, how do you know? Because my grandmother is a Cherokee. And it goes back further than your grandmother. What about your great, great grandmother? What tribe was she? Because the Cherokees was not always there. So they were called an Annie, they were called an Annie Indiga, which meant we the people. And all the tribes started naming themselves, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we the people because that was the first line of the Iroquois Constitution. So when the Constitution was set up here as a remembrance of who they are, most of the Native Americans in their own dialect named their, the tribe, we the people, as a group, because we all had to unite to survive. And so we broke off and became different tribes. So yes, you have Caucasians that can stand up and say, I am your master. As long as you don't stand up and say, right, he's your master, he's my son. You follow that? And you couldn't do that until certain bills where guys like Dr. Martin Luther King, who didn't appear to have any value, had a great amount of value and so far as he got certain rights implemented that gave us the right to stand up in a courtroom. Whereas, let's say, the Nation of Islam ain't giving us no rights. But we're doing it as a Nation of Islam, we're doing talking about what we're going to do to the white man. Dr. Martin Luther King, you know what I'm saying, went out and got certain things passed that gave us the right to get into the courts uh, to get into the, uh, what do you call it, into the universities so we can get the kind of degrees, so we can do the kind of investigation that is necessary for us to make uh, claims. And it's not about, it's not about reclamation of land. You don't, you don't, you don't, it's, the law literally says don't say reclamation of land. I mean, you, don't, you just got to be on the land. No, I don't have to reclaim my land, I have to be on the land. 
and then tell them from the land, this is mine. You know what I'm trying to say? They, did, they made that rule. Here's if you have a situation in America where you had the Africans were brought over. Remember, you got several different slave trades. And they try to keep saying, for instance, each, let's say each group starts basing their philosophy or doctrine around one particular slave trade, like the Nation of Islam keeps talking about John Hawkins in the 15. Right? Then you'll find that the Moorish Science Temple talks about the 17th century, and they're talking about city, Sultan City, and that slave exchange. We as Ansars, we talked about the slave trade that came out of Sudan, where the people of um, uh, Zimbabwe, certain Muslims, sold us over into slavery. That's our Ansars. And everyone, and all these were events, he wasn't in uh, Mother Africa taking one group, he was going around taking different people and making a melting pot. But, what they don't mention is that there were already people here, there was black people already in America, which are the parents of all those people from different parts of Africa, because they moved over here from Uganda thousands of years before we even broke up into different tribes in Africa and became what the Arabs call Africans or uh, Ifriqians, those divided into Faraka, into pieces. You know what I'm saying? So now, what happened is when they got here, at the time we moved way down, let's move down a thousand years, and move to the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th century, you had in the shores of America, Moors who were not Muslims, had nothing to do with being Muslim. But you had Ansars who were Muslims, who came over here, who were brought, I mean, brought over here out of Sudan. All right? So when you get a picture of it, thank you. You get a picture of, uh, let's say, this is America now, and this is Africa. People were brought over here, they're all over this place here. And when the Caucasians started making rules and regulations, he was concerned with the African slave trade. He didn't care nothing about the Moors. The Moors who came from Morocco, right? He didn't care nothing about the Moors that came from Mauritania. He didn't care nothing about the Moors who came from Senegal. He didn't care nothing about the Moors who came. All he was concerned with is niggas from Niger, which he called the Ivory Coast. He called them niggas, nigger, negrito. And they flipped the, they flipped the coin in the Latin speaking world and gave negrito the respect when Morenos used to have the respect. And then they called them negrito Morenos, which is black and Moors. Now they really got the people confused, it was done. So a person in Spanish will walk up to you and call you Negrito and make like they're giving you a compliment. They don't know that the Caucasians switched it, Portuguese turned it around. And Morenos was the compliment. Because it made them more black by identity, not black by color. You know what I'm trying to say? All right, so now, to get to your point. So you did have Americans, you follow? So therefore, they sent out ships to protect America. These are Moors. I got this in the, in, the, in the Constitution book, the whole dialogue, the whole history is written out for you. It tells you the, the place, the time, and everything. Sent them here. So they made a treaty with them first. This is why the White House, the capital, the so-called capital, is called the White House. Because the word White House comes from the word Dar Beda. Dar Beda means the White House in Morocco. And that's the capital of the largest city there. Rabat has recently become the capital of Morocco. The original capital of Morocco was Dar Beda, which in Spanish we say Casablanca, which means the same thing, a white castle or a large white house. So the fact that the United States has a white house as a central point and has a dome on it like a mosque tells you that it was influenced by people who came from Morocco called Moors, Dar Beda. You follow what I'm trying to say? And they sent Abraham Lincoln inside it, but he's sitting in this, the seat of Ramesses. He's not sitting, he's sitting like a federal Ramesses. If you ever see the statue of Ramesses, when you walk by and the thing about what you see in Washington, Abraham Lincoln is doing the same thing. So every grandmaster, it was a grand, okay. So there were Negroes here that were called slaves, even though we know the word slave is Slavic and can't apply to us. They didn't allow themselves to be called slaves and be treated like property. You follow that? You also had the Moors. Now, what was important about this thing 
if I say the Moors came to America, the first thing that comes to your mind is Moroccans with light skin and wavy hair. But the treaty said, do not send any mulatto. No mulattoes was allowed. And mulatto was not, like I said many times, was not even an English word. It was from molad. Those born out of our seed. So they did not allow, they only allowed dark skinned, woolly haired more to come to America. Because they did not want to mix them in with their mulattoes that was already here because of the, uh, what do you call it, the French and the Portuguese raping us. You know, hunky. Hun you know what hunky means, right? Huh? Did you know where it came from? When they would go outside our towns on the other side of the road and honk their horns so the black women would come out. That's why we refer to them as hunkies. They would honk with horns years ago, didn't go beep, they just go honk, honk, if you're old enough, you know that. And so the only way they could get the black women, the Caucasian, get black women to come out at night to make money for their families before they brought them in their house and made like they were washing the floors and taking care of the kids so they can have sex with them. They used to pull up outside our neighborhood, hum, 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 and black women would know to go out there to the woods and they'd meet white or police officers or whatever, and they'd get a couple of dollars for some sex. They'd also implant seeds at times. It's a sad story, but this happened to me too. That's where the name came from. But okay, if I got lost. So they only allowed a certain more here. They were afraid that the more that came in we're going to get mixed up with the uh, African that was here and the mulattoes. So they said, make sure you only bring in dark-skinned, woolly-haired moors from Morocco. Now, part of the plot was to later capture them. They didn't tell us that, though. So now when we came in as moors, they gave us documents and paperwork and treaties made with George Washington with his signature on it. It was in that book I gave you. If I was telling you that they are to be treated like equal citizens to every Caucasian in this country. Now, these were black men and black women with these kind of feathers on them. Walking around during the same time they were having slave blocks and selling people, there were black people there buying the slaves who were more. That's real. That was us. The father that was our culture. We forgot it because we think Africa is our only home. But we were already here. And then we had some that came over here. Again, we were not Muslims. We didn't care. They associate the word more with the word Muslim. Muslim is, is, a, is a curse to a real more. Because we knew that the Berbers invaded us with their Arab, Arab, Arabized ways and poisoned us into believing in their image and therefore pushed more out of existence and all the cultural contributions we did got lost. You follow? But they go back. Once they got over here, remember you had your slaves and then you had your moors and then you had your indigenous people who were already here. The indigenous people were mixed in with Hushen, right? and they produce what you call Native Americans. When you hear about a Native American and you see a person with a round face and two long straight braids, that's not the Native American, that's an Indian. You understand? That's an American Indian. But that's not a Native American. Native American were all matched like that face, that statue we made out there where you come in with that big round head and their big lips and that big nose. I wouldn't even be classified as all Mac. they're purer than me. It's what you mean to be honest, but that's who they were. They were the indigenous people of this land. The Chinese came in, mixed in with them, and produced what you're calling Native Americans today or Indians. And the Caucasian gave them all our rights. Right. Now they walk around saying Cherokee, Choctaw, Shinnecock, Cheyenne, and we walk around saying African, African, African. So what he did to appease the African, he created what's called the Emancipation Proclamation. Sounds big. But the whole thing is he put forth a proclamation that he's going to emancipate us and free us from slavery. But he did not promise us anything. Now there was a promissory note saying 40 acres of the mule. But we multiplied so fast that they was afraid that if they offered every person who stepped forward for that 40 acres in the mule, there wouldn't be enough acreage left on this planet. 
we would take over. So they had to drop that and the mule and just start slapping us upside the head whenever we started acting for our rights or creating organizations that would stifle our growth. You follow that? The first thing to do was to create religion. Get us caught up in religions that don't pertain to our own past. Such as, regardless of what I, or Farrakhan, or the five percents, or the Morris Science Temple, or anybody else says, when you see this word, which I'm quite sure you have a hard time figuring out, the number L, Ala. I could write it with a long letter, but I'm doing it with a shortcut, okay? Arab. Drop this and go Arab. You hear that word, Arab? What do you think of when you hear Arab? Tell the truth. Do you think of Farrakhan? Do you think of Noble Juali? Do you think of the Ansar? No. You think of Saudi Arabian Arabs. Light skinned guys walking around with white on, with pop bellies and stuff. <laughs> you know, cocky ass attitudes. All tycoon. That is. Arab. When you trace that back to, they'll say, Muhammad was a Arabian prophet. No Muslim will deny that. The Muhammad was an Arabian prophet. Right? So there's a subtle confession that Muhammad was an Arab. But they don't say that. But they'll have eight if they want. That is the birth of Muhammad, the death of Muhammad. The hadith of Mu the Muslim world describes Muhammad as a pale Arab. So any Muslim in America, any one of us who's black skinned, who stands up and says, I am a Muslim, is making a fool out of ourselves. Because as far as the society, the records, and history, Arabs are not black skinned, nappy haired people. Now we can modernize it and say we're 5%. Gods and planet Earth, nation of Islam, and Saudi law. We can modernize it, but at the root of it, you follow? There's still Arab. You go to Nigeria, amongst the Hausa, they can be as black as night, and they're Muslims, they're still surrendering to an Arab culture. Meaning, if you take it back to its point of origin, you don't see you, you see an Arab. So you don't have the right, and your rights won't support you in any international courts in this world saying, I am a Muslim, by religion. Because Muslim will be synonymous with Muhammad of 570 who gave birth to it. Women. And the Muslims have to fabricate a false history to stay in the world of trouble by saying all the prophets before Muhammad were also Muslim. Until you say prove it. Hey, so I can show you the Quran. I didn't ask you to show me your book. Your book started in the year 610 and stopped in the year 631 when Muhammad died. This is when Muhammad received his first revelation. Moses, Jesus, Abraham, or all of them were before Muhammad got the Quran. Correct? If the criteria for being a Muslim is belief in the Quran, then how could Jesus have been a Muslim if the Quran didn't exist when Jesus was born? How could Moses have been a Muslim if the Quran didn't exist when Moses was born? See, Muslims had to create a fake history because they only got 1,400 years of history, and now with computers, people are able to jump thousands of years in time in a couple of seconds. Historians, anybody can become a historian just by opening a laptop computer and doing a clip, putting it in Gorola and go back to Muhammad and say, well, then how could Jesus have been a Muslim if the criteria for being a Muslim is making Salat five times a day? And Jesus didn't make Salat five times a day. And the criteria for being a Muslim is you can't make prayers anytime you want to. You must make them according to a schedule. And Jesus went in the garden of Gethsemane when he felt like and fell on his face and prayed. So what's your criteria? They needed to fit in history to control the world as the new world order. You understand? Now let's go back again. Let's go back. Because we eliminate this every time you say I'm a Muslim, I'm a original man. 
And I'm an, I'm an Asiatic black man, you got a whole bunch of crap. Asiatic black man, you think you slick, you think you easing into Asia with these Arabs, but you ain't. That's a con, Asiatic black man, to get you out of Africa into Asia, so you can start thinking, I'm an Asiatic, nigga, you ain't no Asiatic. Look up the word Asia means Orient. And you ain't no Oriental. You can slam, you can take your eyes slam, and you still won't be an Oriental. <laughs> you still be. The next step is to go back to Jesus. When I go back to Jesus, I go back 2,000 years ago. You got that? Got it. That AD and BC, they built with you. They don't know where the world is going. <laughs> now, when you get the picture of Jesus in your mind, and don't lie, because you've seen the picture we do, nigga. So, nigga, lie, nigga, lie. Quick, don't lie. <laughs> Right? When you think of Jesus, what do you think of? That man on your grandmother's wall. Don't lie. Either he's kneeling down doing this, or he's standing here doing this, or he's doing this, but it's the same old little Jewish boy. But he's definitely not Joshua from down the block. He's definitely not no black man with no big lips and no thick nose and no nappy hair. Now, we can draw all the black Jesuses we want. The same way the Muslims can fabricate any part of history they want, we can start creating black Jesus to make us feel good. But when the world looks at it, you follow? And you say, I am a Christian. Christian is synonymous with Romans and Greeks. Correct? And it doesn't fit you. The shoe don't fit. Or should I say glove? <laughs> when we go back to Moses, we're going back to 4,000 years. Actually, three and something, but 4,000 round off. Now, now there's a little trick in history. Because Moses was born in Egypt. Correct? He wasn't considered a little white boy born in Egypt. He was considered an Egyptian while he was in Egypt. Because they gave him an Egyptian name, Moses which simply meant to be drawn out of the Nile. Joseph got them into Egypt, the Israelites. The Israelites who got into Egypt came in there after they had, after Solomon and them had already mixed in with Hittites. Because the description of Solomon in the Bible is that he's light-skinned with black straight hair. Not that he's an African. I don't care how much Rastafari want Solomon to be black. Solomon, according to the Bible, is burly, with hair like raven, black like a raven. That's black straight hair with an ivory belly. Now, one of you niggas upstairs will pop open that belly. There ain't gonna be no ivory that's milk is dribbling off your lips. <laughs> you understand? So Solomon was a light skinned, he was one of us, but he was light skinned with black hair. The Egyptians did not like that, that blood mixing. But the Israelites did get in to Egypt to work for us and mix in with our blood. Creating a lot of these pictures you see on, on Egypt today with all these different races of people. But Moses was considered one of them, but of mixed blood. Not a half original man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Moses was there, but mixed blood. But you don't. In history, they will not identify Moses with American Negro or African. Though Moses was born in Africa, they will not say Moses is an African. They'll say Moses is a Jew. Over and over again. Is that right? So again, Israelite Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, black Jews, whatever you want to call yourself. When you say you are Israelite, you are being related back to Jew. I'm saying, I, I don't mean in your little corner with your 13 followers. And all of y'all sitting around with big Jewish stars on saying, well, that's not who I'm talking to. Y'all can tell each other anything you want. I'm saying when you present your case to the world for identity purposes. Because that's what it's getting down to. You know what I'm saying? When we got to go up against the world and tell them who the hell we are and stop letting them tell us who we are. They didn't change who we are in the last hundred years five different times. We were Negro, Nigger, Negro, Afro-American, now African-American, but they won't say more. You understand what I'm saying? They will keep naming us as long as we'll keep on accepting them. Nobody else comes over here to this country and allows other people to name them. The Italians come over here and you go to a pizza store and they got an Italian flag up, red, orange, and white, and they'll say, I am an Italian. You call them a, a greaser, or what's the other thing they use for them? 
A what? They don't, they don't recognize it. They take it as an insult. If you call a Chinese a slope head or slant eye, they take it as an insult. They call you a nigger, a nigger or Afro-American, you say, thank you, son. Or color. Like, I got more colors on me. I got the less colors on me than anybody on the planet. Everybody else got blue eyes, blonde hair, red hair, green eyes, gray eyes, pink skin, red skin, beige skin. Niggas all come in one color. How do we end up colored? You understand? Unless you meant they colored us all in one color. All right, let's go back. So, calling us a Hebrew Israelite in the international community trying to get your identity or your don't mean jack. You understand? You're going to have to go back to what is recorded. And you're going to have to go back and prove that. And because you were not writing in your language, but rather they were writing in Latin, and they were writing in Greek, you're going to find two words, Latin and Greek. One is morenos, and the other is nigger, the Greek word for black, found in your Bible. In Acts chapter three, verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 1 where they call him nigger, right in the Bible. And that word, you look it up in any Bible dictionary, means black. They were calling Jesus' disciple nigger. All right, so calling us up a Hebrew Israelite is not getting you nowhere. You follow? Now, when you go before this man and you want to get from under paying tax, you want to get out from under his laws, you're going to have to present a reason why Saying that you are in bondage now because you're an Israelite don't mean nothing but somebody tied your hands up. That's what the word bondage means in a legal document. They don't give jack whoppy snap about the Bible. Otherwise, they wouldn't have you raising your left hand to it and putting your right hand on it. You follow what I'm saying? So don't fall for that. All right, so now you get back here and they say that who are you? Who are you? The world wants to know. Now, you know what we throw back at them? I'm Muslim. I'm an Asiatic black man. I'm a original Hebrew. What else do we call ourselves? You know what I'm saying? Then he goes, like the Pharaoh did when Moses came back into Egypt, the Pharaoh said, who is your God? And he said, Jehovah. And he said, let's look this up. He said, we ain't got no Jehovah's in here. Moses, I'll be right back. He went back to Jehovah. He said, Jehovah, I told them about you, and they said, um, you ain't in the book. Who should I say sent me? They said, say I am, that I am sent you. So Moses tracked back across the desert, went before the Pharaoh, and said, uh, go ahead, what's your, what's your case? I am, that I am sent me. And they looked at Moses, they said, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's cool, it sounds nice, but where's the proof? This is what you're doing. You're going before the great pharaoh of this land, and you're walking in there and you're going, I am a Muslim. And they're going, and I am the original man. They go, Go ahead. That's all I want to say. <laughs> and that's all that happens in Farrakhan's speeches. We are the original people. We are the so and so. We are the this and this. You are the that and that. He beat you up. He took this from you. All right, now put some money in that can. I'll see y'all next day today. He ain't saying nothing. And if he says, we are Shabazz. The people are going to open the books of history and do what? The same thing like with Moses. They're going to start going through the list of nationalities, tribes, identities, and say, mm, Shabazz, 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 mm, Shabazz, Shabazz, just a minute, Shabazz, 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 uh, Shabazz, 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 and who's he? He's our God. Oh, God. Okay, Master from Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what's happened to us. 
You know what I'm saying? This is what's going on with us every day. It's been going on for 400 years with niggas standing up with, the, with a, somebody else's culture and coming at the world as if they represent us. You understand what I'm saying? But now you step back and say, um, say, uh, who is your God? Say, I am my own God. I can be found in every one of those books. Because if you just trace out the history of Jesus and his description according to your Bible, you'll find that Jesus is black. The hair like lamb's wool. Feet like burnt brass, as if they've been burnt in a furnace. That is the description in the Bible. I don't care what the hell you got on the wall. I don't care who drew that picture you got up there. According to the Bible, that's my description. When I want to trace out Moses, I know Moses was born in Egypt, so Egypt is in Africa. So Moses was an African. That's who I am. And Moses, according to your Bible in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, went into Egypt as a what? As a what? As an Elohim, as a God. You know why he went into Egypt as a god? Because he couldn't go before him as a man because the man in charge saw himself as a god. So when you're sitting in, church, in a court and that man is sitting on that bench in front of you, right up there they got God. He's sitting up there. What does he call himself? Magistrate. What is that? The master. The one in control. God. This man makes you put your hand on a Bible over here on the left side of the court and then makes you make a plea. What is the plea abbreviated for? Huh? To beg. How do you beg? Now, the statement is, in God we trust. Correct? Right. So if you said to him, I don't plead. I trust in God. And you're not God. So you can't sentence me. Because vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So now, if you want to sentence me, you've got to bring the Lord down here personally and have him sitting on that seat. That's the only way I can get judged or in God we trust have to come down because you ain't my God and I don't trust you. You may catch hell there in court, but you'll be right and you'll eventually win. And if they can hush it up, they'll push it out to court. Because you don't have to plead to no man that has a court that says in God we trust. You would have to deal with who? God. And, and that judge is not God until you surrender yourself to him in a plea. Or what they refer to as a plea bargain. Listen to that close. A plea bargain. I commit a crime. Right? You're the judge. You know I committed the crime. The DA works under the judge. He knows I committed the crime. I I know I can commit a crime. My lawyer knows I committed a crime, and I can go into the back room and make a deal called a plea bargain, which means the judge, the DA, and them are willing to overlook the crime. Is that justice? No. If I committed a crime, I should be tried and sentenced. How can you give me? How can you make a bargain with crime if there's laws? of right and wrong, how can you bargain with it? How can you batar crime? That tells you there's no system there. You understand? You pay tax because you want to pay tax. And they'll chase you down and beat you up for those tax because you want to pay tax. And tax in this country. You say, well, because religion is separate from state. They said, they go out and get a child and become tax exempt. But as long as you're tax exempt here, I can go into your records, check your books, and do anything I want, anytime I want to you. You understand what I'm saying? Tell me what I mean that. I said separate religion and state. I am the state before your religion got here. And your church is based on religion because it's under God. 
and I don't fall under your God, so I can't swear on your Bible because I don't believe in your Bible. Because you have not proved this Bible to be authentic, so therefore I can't put my life on the line. So until you can prove this Bible to be authentic, I demand that you throw this case out of court. Yeah. Right. Because you have to prove to me that this Bible I'm going to put my hand on and swear to is authentic, and that can't be proven. You have to prove to me that the God who we put our trust in does exist, and that can't be proven. You understand? Yeah. That's the law. But as long as you keep surrendering to him, keep on signing things over to him, you keep on giving him the power to rule you and control your life, you ain't got no power. You got to go back in and say, in your books, you have this word written. You sometimes in French spell it like this. You follow that? But it identified me. Back to the, qu the question. Meaning that they were Africans over here. They fell under your laws, the Manifestation Proclamation. And then there was us Moors who came over here to help you. You understand? And then there was both of our descendants who was here before you got here. So I got three routes to go when talking to you. I could be the ordinary Negro who falls under the Emancipation Proclamation and gets abused. I'm begging for my rights and you ain't giving me nothing. Or I could be the Moor who falls under treaties made with George Washington and exempts me from all of your touches. Or I can be an indigenous Native American and verify that I was here before you got here because you can't say who was here before you got here. And I'm saying I was. Then I got to take my family name and link it back to a place. For instance, if you take the name, let's say York. York will go back to Virginia, Boston, and throughout the Carolinas. You'll even find some Yorks in Louisiana. They just left there. But mainly the Yorks are in Virginia and, on, and somewhere out west with Washington. So that name can be traced to an environment, Virginia VA, where a man called Ben York died. Right? And this guy, Ben York, has been proven to be the name Yusuf Ben Ali. Because he went into the courts of North Carolina and fought for his rights as a Moor, but they were captured by the watchmen and shuttled in with the Negroes. Mm. You follow that? Yeah. And mixed in with them and sold yeah. as if they were Negroes. Yeah. And they weren't, they were Moors. So they went into court, fought the case, and won. And they stamped on their papers to be given all the rights of a white citizen in America. This is you. You did this. So I can trace it back to this man here and then trace him back to the Yamasi tribe of Native Americans and the mixture of the Moors, Morocco, and Mali. You can trace it all back and trace it right back to Georgia. Once we get that piece of paper together, I'll talk to you about your Parhams out here, your Williams, and any other last name who has a family roots in Georgia. And we can trace them back and find out which Native American tribe you got ushered into. You understand? Because all of y'all who survived with a long nose got ushered into some Native American tribe. You see? And once we get all that together, we can keep centering it around Georgia on record in Millersville, in the file, is the Yamashi tribe, and the description is you. They have it there now. Go to, if you don't believe me, go check it. The woman told us, literally, when you finish your research, could you please send me back a book because we need more information on y'all. That's what she told us in the library in Millersville. When you finish, if you go there, they'll say, some other people was here asking about this too. The other people was, hello. I want to pull out all the files on it. All the information. How did the college get possession of Rock Eagle? When did they get possession of those deeds? How did they get, who gave it to them, etc. And go back to that person and trace out the name of that person, which we've done, and found out it was illegal transaction. Produce the document was the question. Show me the document. Well, we can. Then I can show you the genetic trait that I am your master. Washita, Cherokee, Creek, Seminole as well as more. 
prove that. You follow that? And then you take that, not here. You don't go to his court. You go to the international courts in Geneva. And the first thing you put forth is a statement, I am an indigenous person. Stop saying anything other than that. What is your nationality? I am a Moor. If any of you people have listened to me and went to any professional office and said it, you saw the reaction. You saw him go, we have, we have um, white, Asian, uh, you know, Negro, and other. Well, put more in place of other. Well, aren't you a Negro? No. You see them fall apart, but you see them write it down because they know it's the law. Because they have a philosophy that if they break one treaty, none of the treaties they make is to be trusted. That's in Congress. And they made a treaty with you as a Moor. They didn't make no treaties with you as Negroes or slaves. They got treaties us with you as Native Americans. And they know that the Native Americans, the Moroccans, mixed in, I mean, I mean the Native Americans and the Moroccans mixed in, and that's what's sitting here. And that's why some of you got wavy hair, some of you got nappy hair, and some of y'all got big lips and some got thin lips and some got slant eyes. That's why some of y'all are light skinned. That's why you're all mixed up. It's a melting pot of our genes. And then after the treaty was signed, then other Moroccans were allowed to come in. But there was no separation. If you go to Morocco right now, you don't find the racism you find right here in America. And there's a strain of Moroccans that run from the French, those who think they're French, all the way down to those who think they're Africans. But they, get the, they live together in peace. There's no problem. That's how you lived back then. So the reason to answer the question, there are Negro slaves here. And as long as you keep saying you're Negroes and accept organizations like the NAACP, you will never have rights to what is rightfully yours. You with me? But the moment you start saying, I am an indigenous person, sovereign, I belong to a sovereign nation. They can't do jack with it. Because they have admitted in their textbooks that they came to America and when they got here, people were already here. And all you're saying to them is, correct, I am of the people that was already here when you got here. You can't say I'm not because you hadn't got here yet. I am not an African. I was not a part of the slave trade. Got me mixed up with somebody else. That's my brother. Here you go, right here. <laughs> and he's walking around saying he's an African. That's his business. There goes my Negro reform. That's my reform brother right there. See, he's a Negro, American Negro. That's not me. Now, you may not want to do that. I'm standing around, you know who the hell they are. But when you walk up to brother from Puerto Rico and say, What are you saying, Puerto Rico? He said, No, you ain't. You're not a Puerto Rico. What are you? You're more. You know what I'm saying? We're from the Dominican Republic. You're not from the you're not a Dominican Republic. You're more. Cuba is a place. Not a people. And I'm Cuban. That, don't let them fall for that crap. Stop to strip back all the names and keep saying more. And then we become the majority. And according to their system, the majority rules. So if all the Latinos, Asians, Nubians, as you want to, whatever, come together and say, we are all Moors, what happens? We control the thing. Now, you can be a Moor, brother, and say, Assalamu Alaikum. It's Assalamu Alaikum. Jesus is Lord and Savior. Jesus is Lord and Savior. Shalom Lekha. Shalom Lekha. Neturu. Neturu. Odabo. Odabo. You know what I'm saying? Anything, anything that makes you feel happy, but your nationality first. Because they're, they're weigh, when they weigh us in this country, they weigh us blacks against Caucasians, right? But right. well, if I stopped and raised my hand and said, excuse me, sir, <coughs> and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Just what nationality is Clinton? I want to break that down. I like Clinton. Now, what nationality is? He's Irish. Let's separate him over here. You follow? 
Let's go to Cuomo in New York. He's Italian. And let's go to Koch. He's Jewish. If I'm saying, so I start taking them where they got white. I start taking that and break it down like this. Irish, Polish, Scottish, Jewish, French, German, Italian, Swedish. Don't be afraid. Huh? Russian, what? Polish. Polish. Yugoslavian. Okay. <laughs> you got the point. Yugoslavian. However, they say we are all Negroes. They don't want to recognize that if a person comes over here from Trinidad, that he's a Trinidadian. The moment he gets over here, he becomes a Negro. But brother's from Cuba, and he's dark skin right away, he is. Everybody who speaks Spanish is Latino to them. They don't care whether you're from the American Republic. They just say, you speak Spanish, you're Latino. Correct? And you say, excuse me, sir, I'm not Latin. Because Latins are Romans and I'm not a Roman. You're bound there, you back him in his trap. Person says, excuse me, I'm not a Trinidadian. I'm not three mountains. You know what I'm saying? What will happen when we do to them what they have been doing to us in reverse? will demand that they present the man on television or the woman on television that commits the heinous crime that they put first their nationality. Because unfortunately, because we're calling them all look alike, if a crime is committed, they put you on television and say, well, a nigga did it. They don't say a Cuban did it. You know what I'm saying? It's a nigga did it. But when Caucasians do that, there's no way to log it. I want to be able to say, okay, an Irish man is the one who grabbed that store. A uh, Jew just burnt up that building. What was what was what was his name? He burnt up the government's building. What was his name? McVeigh. What was he? McVeigh. McVeigh. Well, say it. You know, I'm not sure of them. Say it. Young Irish guy boom up you at the FBI building. So everybody can turn in and focus on the Irish and say, you Irish is a bad people. So if I catch Irish people walking in my, my neighborhood at night, I can stop them and say, you better get out of here because you're up to something. If I have a store and an Irishman walks in, I can walk up and say, oh, can I help you? Because you've got a trip, you've got a history of blowing up buildings. We don't need you Irish people walking around our neighborhood. That's what they do to you and I. Snoop Doggy Dog commits a crime and I walk through the neighborhood and they ask me, come here. What are you doing here? Walking through the neighborhood. You live around here? Does it really make a difference? Yeah, it makes a difference because we don't know who you are. Are you supposed to know who I am for some reason? To have a hit record or a movie or some shit out? <laughs> uh, unless you're implying because I'm walking to a white neighborhood on the planet Earth in the U.S. of A. where I have my rights and pay my taxes that you both know who I am. But I know you're not doing that because you'd be in violation of my rights. You wouldn't want to do that. That's not what you do. You know what they'll say? Nigga, just get out of here. Whoa, so, uh-uh. More, just get out of here. Nigga wouldn't have questioned you. You know what I'm saying? I have a right to stay here unless I'm in violation of some law. I have over $7 in my pocket, so you can't get me for loitering. I don't have any tools, so you can't get me for burglary tools. I don't plan to piss on the sidewalk. So you can't get me. I'm not going to talk to no white people, so I won't be disturbing the peace. So what is your case? And if you don't have no case, get out my face. And you do have a right to ask them. You just don't know you do. And when you start asking them, they back up off you. I'm not saying you to get arrogant. I'm telling you to ask questions. If you know you speed, nigga, don't say why you pull me over. Because then when I, when I want to question them when I wasn't speeding, that's what kill, kills it. Because you lie. If you speed, they pull you over and say, lie, I speak, give me a ticket. Because I know I'm going to say, I wasn't speeding. I was, I was only doing 150. I didn't, I didn't know I was speeding. Then when I come to the neighborhood and I'm not speeding, they pull me over just to keep us out of the neighborhood, man. So yes, there was a mixture. We have got to put them on the spot. And as you talk to Caucasians, the same way they do, I say, by the way, what's your nationality? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what do you mean? What is, you know, what's your grandmother? She's Irish. Oh, okay, just want to know. <laughs> Why you want to know? I mean, there's anything wrong with me wanting I just want to know if you, you know, because if you're Irish, I know that you believe that you came from little gnomes and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and at least I know back in your history some dumb shit about men walking around with bagpipes and short skirts. You know what I mean? I just want to know. Is there anything wrong? 
If I talk to a Jew, I say, at least now I know you think you God's chosen. Anybody else is, is Gentile. Anybody else going to hell except you. At least I know how you feel about me. Now if I say you're Italian, you know the mafia? Why are you going to say all Italians is in the mafia? Why are you going to say all niggas are people? <laughs> Let's set the record straight. Let's stop being questions and let's start throwing some questions politely. Like I said many times, they ask you, can you help me in the store? What do you say? Yes. A white person walks up to you shopping and say, can I help you? Say yes. The moment I finish shopping, I get my package, I want you to help me carry it to my car. And if you don't intend to do that, then get the fuck out of my face. Straight up. Because they will walk over and ask you, can I help you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can help me. Nigga, carry, get, carry this bag. That's what you mean, right? Because you can't help me decide what I want to wear based on the way you dressed. You can't help me pick my style of clothes. Look at them shits you got on. So what you mean by help me? Carry my packages. What else could you possibly mean? You understand what I'm saying? Any other questions on it? Yes, brother. There's international courts and there's national courts, all right? We as people that are a product of a kidnapping, not a slavery, we were kidnapped and we were sold. I'm trying to get this in your head now, because whoever brought you was an accessory after the fact. You understand that? So now, as a we have got to learn to get on the inside so that any windows we break always from the inside out and never from the outside in. You dig what I'm saying? What Good. type of action, like in other words, you go into that course, what type of action would that be considered? Like trying to trying to establish your identity All right. What is it considered what does it fall under? Exactly. It falls under sovereign nations. And any individual Any individual who can prove that they have a link. If you just jump up step and say, I'm a Native American, I'm a Cherokee, they'll say which Cherokees agree with you that we have on record as Cherokees. So this is something that all of us can do No, I can do it as an individual because I can prove by the name York that I am linked into Ben York who links in the old York who links in the use of Ben Ali who got those petitions. Now then I can say you are my extended family. You with me? This is my brother cousin and she's married to my uncle and so we are extended family so I can put forth a, a, a petition that you are petitioning me and I'm saying right he's a Washita right he's a Yamasi he's in our tribe then you take that petition anywhere and flop it down and go boom I have been verified to be a part of the Yamasi tribe by a person who's a Yamasi who have verified who they are that's how it works you feel what I'm trying to say but anybody can go try to do it, and they might succeed, I hope them. But we do have a system working. Right. And we hope don't get disturbed by our own people messing it up. Working. Yeah, way in the back. I already knew mine. Okay. Yes. But what will happen is, I don't, I don't know what you, I don't know the motive, so let me, let me work with you. Yes, but if you're playing this game, like I know people that say they're Elohim. I'm an Elohim. I'm an Anunnaki. And somebody goes, I get upset, you know, like, oh, come on, we don't need, we don't need the, we don't need the added nuts going down there, making us as covered in with legit arguments look like nuts. So don't go down there with damn Indian feathers on saying I am a Cherokee because my grandmother was a Cherokee and pick up a woman I was straight here and say because my grandmother has straight hair that's how I know she's a Cherokee because when we get down there to the international courts and enough American Negroes come there with that bull crap you know what's going to happen? They're going to change the law. Indigenous people started 1992 and 2000. You can tell me you are Shoshone, and I will ask you from which reservation. Let me see the, the certificate. If I don't ask you, I'm just respecting your request or your wish. 
Prove it to me. So black people just start standing up saying, I am a this, I am a that. The devil is going to alter the law. And he has no gripes about changing laws. Yes. What's the proof? That's all I know. Okay, well here's the disadvantage of being a Cherokee. The Cherokee, as I told you all years ago, sold out. If you go up to North Carolina where the Cherokee Reservation is in the Smoky Mountains, those jobs sold out. They pay, they pay tax to the government. So being a Cherokee makes you just American. But you got to find out which tribe your grand, great grandmother was in before she joined that band of people who didn't want to fight with us but sold out. The Pone, who were part of Seminole, sold out and became scouts for the Caucasians against us. Our own people. You follow that? When they show you the Pone, they show you these guys with this black straight hair. No, they were Negroes fighting in the Confederate war with Pone, were Cherokee, uh, Cheyenne, a variety of tribes. Um, what's the other one? Oshit. Washita, meaning the Washita, some of them sold out and was fighting against us. You got to make sure when you step down the fire, you don't step on the wrong side. Old York was a sellout. The Duke of, I mean, um, Sergeant York, who's one of my relatives, was also a sellout. He fought with the, what do you call those guys? The black troops, um, the Buffalo Soldiers. They pump you up, the Buffalo Soldiers. Buffalo Soldiers was Toms. They sold out the family and fought against and massacred Native Americans. He's in the family. I may not like it, but it's truth, it's truth. I'm not going to hide it. You know what I'm trying to say? If Ben York wasn't a sellout, he wouldn't have been running around with Lewis and Clark and them interpreting things for the Native Americans. But when they betrayed him and it got personal, he set them up and altered the treaty of the Louisiana Purchase so that they didn't buy anything but the police barracks downtown. And those documents were verified. A sister in Louisiana, uh, Ver Veriachi Embridge, brought it up, went to court, proved her, proved her case, and got 68,300 and some odd acres of land back from the government right now. You follow? And that means the door is open. But if you're not planning on open the door and hold it and open and usher a bunch of people in because you want to do your own thing, then don't mess our stuff up because you're into yourself. Yeah, yeah. Right. Whoever does it got to hold the door open and get as many people in as we possibly can. Because when they acknowledge uh, Empress Veriachi, a black woman with woolly hair as a Native American, they open a door. Because before that, you only had one concept of Native Americans. People who were in Oriental looking with round faces with braids running down like this or feathers. Now they're confessing no that those people came after the original Native Americans. And that's you. So you have rights, but you've got to go before them right. Don't bug out. And if you go mess it up, don't interfere. If you don't know what you're doing, don't be fronting, in other words, niggas, but niggas be fronting. Don't be fronting. This ain't no time to be fronting and pretending you some shit you ain't. Mess it up for all of us. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, shut up. If you don't know what you're talking about, shut up before you mess us all up. Because we know we talk too damn much. That's our problem. I'm sitting there telling y'all laws I should be keeping private and just getting it done. But y'all be probing. You want to know, what's this? What's that? What's this? If I didn't, if I said I'm going to take your bed, what's he up to? You stealing our money? What's he trying to do? So I'll tell you what I'm doing. So don't be now, can I do it? No, you can't do it. If you did, you wouldn't be asking me, could I do it? You know. You understand? So don't mess it up. Because a person in my age, 52 years old, got to be doing it for you. I ain't doing it for myself, but I got 10 more years before I might not even know what the word Washita means. I'm trying to get it done for the young people, and they got more to fight after that until it's all straight. Until we can tell them, get off of our land. Take your bombs and your wars and your politics and your racism and your hate and get the hell off our land. When I say off our land, I mean off of America. I don't mean off of Georgia. I mean go back to Europe where you belong with your evil stuff. 
And those amongst you that don't want to be evil and want to live right where you can live in peace. But you evil as white people that think everything is based on wars. Why are you up there messing with Mars? None. What would have happened if you'd have landed on Mars and some Martians would have slapped the hell out of one of y'all? We would have been at war with Mars? Dropping bombs over here or are we dropping bombs over? Let's go to Iraq. Were the Iraqis dropping bombs over here or was America dropping bombs over? Can I, you, know, can I, you know I can keep on going on? How can I get in a fight with you if you ain't there? How can I get in bomb up Somali if I'm not in Somali? The problem is there's a madman running around Somali beating up the Somalians who I don't give a damn jack about but I'm going to go over there with troops and beat up some more Somalians to try to find a man who's a Somalian beating up Somalians. That's called minding somebody else's damn business. And if you want that the Somalians got a situation where there's a crazy Somalian beating up other Somalians, let the Somalians solve it. That's all. That might be the way nature's working. Might be a form of elimination. But we always, always in somebody's stuff. And the moment a group of people like us sit back and say, I want to have my own stuff, you know, all week we got them out here, can we take pictures? <laughs> they pull up to the pylon, 20, 30 of them a day. Can we just walk around? What's going on over there? Read the book. <laughs> They're ready to get involved. And we walking around there with rose bushes on their heads and... You know, and crystals and that's what they want to do out there. They want to be involved. We can't have nothing. Every time we get something, they want it. And when they come out and ask, uh, what was the drums thing, you know, the banging the drums all night thing you guys do? You know, what is that? That's one of our customs. What's it about? It's about banging the drum all night. I mean, you know, you know, what? We're, you know, you know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? You know, you know, you know, yeah, I know. Banging the drum all goddamn night. <laughs> they want you to give them some place in history where they can trace it to so they can put a label on and say, okay, they got this from Senegal, you know. <laughs> and the Senegalese got it from us. Yeah, yeah. And they say, what's with this ceremony of ISIS? A bunch of women standing around, you know, drinking wine and stuff. What is that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know your goddamn business. After it comes like that, once you leave our shit alone, we got all little shit out here. You got the whole country that stole, not to mention everybody else's damn country. We got a little thing going on out here, and you want this too? Yes. Let them down there and people walk to me, some of y'all. Is that right if I bring my white friend? Yes. Did that nigga bring me to the KKK? Yes. <laughs> places. So all they do is come in and take our stuff. Yeah. If they can help it, there'll be a whole bunch of crystal worshiping witches walking around out there. Oh, Isis, the mother Isis, the witch of witch witches she'll be. There'll be a whole bunch of old well, Amorites standing there chanting some druid crap. Christians will be saying, see how it's shaped? It's shaped like a cross. It must be the Blessed Mother Mary. There'll be having Christian services out there. Why can't y'all have your own thing here? I'm not saying white folks can't come. Anybody can come anywhere in America, correct? For as long as this piece of land is America. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they can come visit, but what, you know? Don't be ushering niggas out. Come on out there and do it with me. Come on, you know? Come on out there and walk around with me, white friend. How you doing that crap? They'll bring a whole, they'll be a whole, they'll be out there with beer cans soon. They don't got no respect for anybody's religion. Watch any movie. They just dog God. They dog everything. They don't respect nothing. So why invite them? Why do we, why create your own destruction? I don't, I don't want to sound like I hate white people. It's not about hate. It's about damn when I got my own thing here. Well, I got a basketball game. Why you on the court? Go play hockey, nigga. I ain't no hockey bro. What you doing over here? It ain't my fault that that nigga got in the golf game. It ain't my fault. Y'all shouldn't have let him in the court. Tiger Woods don't belong on the golf court. Ain't, that ain't a black man's game. Damn. Sister. Let me draw a circle. I understand exactly. You draw a circle. Caribbean. 
I mean, that's not the cap is, but <laughs> we need, I would have to fix it Okay? Now do that. Now do the Caribbean, right? No. This is Africa. Alright? Archaeologists, paleontologists, all of them agree that everybody that's walking on this planet came out of here. That's a fact, correct? So now, some of us walked straight on across here before it parted, right? And then some of us drifted on down. Some of us did it because we wanted to. Other of us was put on ships and taken. But we all started out from here. So whether a person has a, a Irish accent, which is a Jamaican accent, which is really Irish, if you listen to it close, or a Negro accent or a sudden draw, and whether if somebody likes plantains or someone likes fried chicken or chitlins, all of us are the same nigga with a new name. You know what I'm saying? We got to start telling him, I ain't no Jamaican, I ain't no Haitian, that's just a place I'm from, I am a Moor. And we become a massive amount of people with one race. You know what I'm saying? And then when we move, we move like your family wants to come over here from the islands, you just say, come on. And they can't stop you when they recognize who they are. But as long as she's saying, or I'm saying, I'm Trinidadian, and I want to come to America, then he said, ask me, can you come? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Ask me. And you, if you said, I'm, I'm called a Trinidadian who was once in America before you moved me here, I'm going back home. They can't reject you. It's laws that you don't know, power you don't know you have, because you have this tendency to go surrender to him. That's the answer to the question of how come Farrakhan was allowed to go to Libya when Americans were told they can't go to Libya because Libya was at war with America. Because Farrakhan is not an American. <laughs> you follow that? They can't stop you. They can only stop Americans. You follow? He don't even know that's the reason why. <laughs> he don't know that's why. He's probably trying to figure out himself why they didn't whip this shit out of him. Because he's not an American. They really can't stop you from going anywhere. Because I can't stop you from breaking your way out. He can stop you trying to come back in. You with know I me? Mean? Yeah. So right now, if we want to leave and go to Ghana, we can pack our stuff up, and we can go to the airport, right? And jump on a plane and go to Ghana. And nobody won't bother us. You know that, right? On your way back in is when the customs stop you and check your stuff and check your passport and check your visas and ask you about your exit visa and your entrance visa. On the way out, they don't care. You can drive from here to Florida and they won't even take tolls. On your way back up, <laughs> back home, that's the way it works. You with me? It's a game. It's a big game they play. And we gotta, we gotta get out from under the game. And when enough of us start doing it, then they will all to the law and get out your way. You understand? Yeah. They will take an organization like ours and say, give them what they want. Because the people that follow Farrakhan, they're going to never listen to him. Because they listen to the nation. You just said it, nigga. Right. Just had something cool to say. It's nation time. <laughs> but now, what do you do to prove that it's nation time, that we are independent nation, and that we can stand on our own? What are we going to do about that? Nothing, but we got to start somewhere. The, the, uh, the people across the lake over there, across the road, called us this week and said to us, being you won't sell us your land, we are willing to sell you the land across the road. Yeah. You know what that means? Nigga, being you ain't leaving. We're leaving. We have, how many acres here, y'all? That's 600 more they want to sell us. Now, that, that's real. All the other crap, we got some land down south and we putting together farms and all that kind of stuff. That don't mean nothing if you're not trying to set up an indigenous nation, sovereign people, making decisions over themselves, educating their children. I can channel the amount of crack that comes in here, the kind of alcohol or spirits or whatever the hell you want to call it that gets in here, 
create your own police department to police your own environment, you, you follow what I'm saying? Then that's called peace of mind. So you ain't no Muslim until you got peace of mind. And you ain't got no peace of mind living in his world while you saying assalamu alaikum. And he's telling you what to do and how to think. Tell him you take Juma Friday off to go to prayer, I'm going to fire you. So you got a choice between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your boss and your rent and yourself. If all of you just say, I'll make, I'll make it up later. Fail six. Come on, y'all. That's dangerous. Yeah, anything else? <laughs> This is a question I'm referring to and talking about, but I had asked a question maybe about a month ago and he wasn't present, but it was due to your old publication with uh, Secret Societies Unmasked. You had a picture that was in there, and going back to what we're going to with the ancient symbol of Hathor and the six-pointed star and crescent, or the bull's horns, there was a picture that you had in there that was on, I think it was Saturn, and it was a hexagram that was on there. And... I was wondering how does all that tie in with what we're doing because it's there. Because I saw the picture, it's an old publication though. Right, I know that's what's going on. Okay. The hexagram, the pentagram, all of those are our symbols they stole. The ram's head that they turned into something negative was a symbol of Ra when it dealt with us. And it dealt with the sun and their concept of hell and the fire and the heat was Shambhala. Everything they made in their religion comes out of us. Our symbols were made up of two. We had the male symbol and the female symbol. This here symbol represented Isis and this was Osiris. Right? Osiris was governed by the deity Min. You understand that? Min is a phallic symbol. This represents the head of the individual, arms, legs, penis. So I've been trying to tell them people in the nation of Islam, you know, tell me how it's five or seven the longest. They say this represents Islam. They say arm, leg, <laughs> leg, arm, head. You heard that before, right? Yeah. And I said, well, I don't know about you, bro, but I got an arm, I got an arm, a leg, a penis, a leg, an arm, and a head. I don't know what happened, what religion you come from, or what, who cut the shit off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you got, you missing a point. <laughs> if any man in here stands up and parts his legs like this and spreads his arms out, you won't get a five-pointed star. You may only, you may see a five-pointed star because he's dressed but if he stands like this, you gonna get a five point star? What are you gonna get? All right. Now, when you look at this, this is a cavity, a meeting point of the power of birth. Which which creature between us will stand like this and be five points? Let's think for a while. But this is real goddamn complicated. Now, let me see. Women. Yeah, right, 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 right. Women, right? When is the nation of Islam gonna wake up and realize that dumb shit, arm, leg, leg, arm, head is not real? Your father never will. And this symbol in ancient times was inlaid in this symbol. They used to put this within this in a circle. They called this one the seal of David. And they call, I mean, the seal of Saul, Solomon, and they call this one the shield of David. In ancient times, both Solomon and David was us. Now, when you put a crescent on it, and put a star here, and tell the world that this is a symbol of reality, of facts, all wise, right, and exact, perfect, bond, you lying, nigga. Because if I complete this moon, crescent, there's no way a star can get on this side of the moon. You with me, man? As long as you show a crescent, you give the impression that a star can be placed here. But when you see a crescent, you're not actually seeing a piece of the moon, you're seeing a whole moon with a piece blocked off. And no star could get on this side of the moon. So it's a lie. It's an illusion. 
It is not the truth to tell a person that the five-pointed star in Christ is the universal symbol of sun, moon, and stars. You know why? Because when I say the symbol of the sun, moon, and stars, what am I doing? I am being redundant because this and this is the same damn thing. It's lies. So when they present a five-pointed star in the crescent, they intend to tell you lies. It's an illusion. It causes confusion. And that was the purpose of religion from day one. To divide us. To have us kill. Who's the, who is responsible for most of the bloodshed in the world today? Religious people. Terrorism. Right? Self-righteous individuals who think they are in direct contact with Allah or God and thus they could go off and kill people. It's an illusion and it creates confusion. And we have to defuse it and put the facts back. So pop off that fire point, look down at that fire point and start pressing me you've been wearing and realize you've been had. Now if you say, what about the Star and crescent. Isn't this an illusion because this is a star and it can't fit inside of a crescent? We spoke years ago and we told them that this symbol is not a crescent, that it was a symbol of a snake with its tail in its mouth. A crescent is only used when it's dealing with ISIS. Or Dinah, the female principle. The star was supposed to represent the semen, the power of male, the reproductive, the ovary and the semen coming together. Not a star and a moon. The circle with his tail in his mouth represented taking control over evil. It's like a dog chasing himself in a circle. And in that, we put the seal of Solomon. And in fact, we put the key of eternal life. The crescent here. The sphere, if you see on my face, it's the same as the arc. It's the same thing. But we did not say it represents the universe and the sun, moon, and stars. Because that would be a lie. Whether they like it or not, it's a lie. You <laughs> still get it? Okay, so, so basically is it a symbol for their status, like it is here? It's all, yeah, it, definitely. Okay. You have, no, what you will find, when you look at what they find, which is beautiful for you, because, uh, I'll go back to that too. When they go to Mars, and we said they were on Mars, and people are saying they weren't on Mars, and this was like five years ago, right? You felt a little crazy, because you were listening to this crazy man called... Dr. Melakazi York, who was telling you that they're on Mars. They got Mars projects. Remember that? And you was reluctant when you was in an intellectual conversation to bring up the part of the doctrine where I mentioned that they were on Mars. You beat it around that part and used the part of the doctrine where you wouldn't look stupid. See, but now that they're showing you flashbacks from Mars and you know anything you see on television they had for at least what? 10 years, you realize they was on Mars, what? So now, something else you said is confirmed. And when they get to Mars, they're naming rocks already. How, they're giving them Disney World names. Snoopy. What's with the familiarity? You know what those are? Those are nicknames not to have to tell you what they see. They are appealing to your better instincts. By saying Batman, you have an image of a Batman, your mind immediately goes there. You say, listen, you're on the moon. I'm sorry, you're on Mars. You've been up there for two days. You're getting messages. Well, here's the facts. Is there life on Mars? Well, according to what we see, there's a defi definitely a possibility that there was life on Mars. Does that mean all of the textbooks that date get thrown away that said it was impossible for life to exist on Mars? Or do you admit that there are people on Earth that know a little more than you that said there was life on Mars when you said there wasn't? 
They can't do that. Because if they accept the fact that I said there was life on Mars and everybody said I was crazy, and now they sound, it's not, what's that going to do about everything else I tell you? Then when I say, yeah, Europa, Europa is the real planet. No, don't fall for that. Saturn don't have no rings. There's no rings. That's dust particles. And the planet Saturn is really the planet Titan. Now they come back. Titan is a planet. You go, I heard that before. I read that in Holy Tablets. Yeah, the Europeans, oh, yeah, they got their own planet, play these. Then they went over and set up their own planet called Europa. They got a planet called Europa, Europa, Europe. Where's Africa planet? <laughs> it's up there, you know. It's called Cyrus. It's called Cyrus. Cyrus star constellation is where the Africans come from, according to them. That's their doctrine. They come from Plates, we came from Cyrus. Who the hell was here? And they're making it look like they came from there to Earth and then from here back to Mars. You know what I'm saying? But someone told you, no, we came out there, went to Mars, planned from there, and then germinated Earth, and then came here. Correct? Then they find stones here on this planet that come from Mars. But they didn't find any stones on Mars that came from Earth. So if we put this in proper sequence, it must be we came to Mars first. And from Mars, we came to Earth. But he don't want to deal with that. You know why? Because genetically, by the thickness of his lips, he couldn't have been around that long. Because he made what they refer to as evolutionary charts. And he started dating things according to carbon and how old they were. And when they look at him and his regressiveness, you can figure out by how fast a fire burns out, how long it took to burn out. You follow that? Right. So if you have regressive genes, I can see by how fast you are regressing, how long it took you to get to that state, and thus tell you exactly how old you are. So now, if between, that's my pen, in between 1970, now use that today, and 1991, seven, we're having more and more complaints about how the sun 